Radio.tv Guide us onto the right path. It's a prayer. It means that there is a path that you are going to follow to live your life. And it is your responsibility as a parent to guide your child through that path. If a child doesn't go through that path, we should hold somebody responsible. So the question would be, what is the traditional institution bringing in as a solution to ensure that those problems that you profiled, those challenges that we're seeing amongst our ulama, amongst our malams that don't say the right thing to guide our children, or keep quiet when something is going wrong, or not give the child the proper understanding of his or her religion. I don't think there's any religion that teaches a human being to take another human being's life. So, what possible solutions could the religious organizations proffer for us to solve this problem? Uh, thank you for having me again, Ross. Again, Ross. I, the question has to do with the effort of religious institutions again. Uh, before I go there, I just want to, when you look at the whole thing, they are related to each other. Um, why I said so is the effort of sensitization of our people. A religious scholar only has one thing to do, is to educate the public on the consequences or causes of a factor or a phenomenon. So the only thing that is left is for the person to implement it or not. If he's ready to implement it, he's going to be free in the society. And if he's not ready, he's left for the consequences, either for the nature or nurture to deal with him. Um, I like to debate a little, and that division has to do with um, the group and us ourselves. Um, Comrade Duan was talking about forming a public forum, sensitizing people, which is very essential. The religious group have been doing that. The, let me even make an example of um, the Mawlud we organized from the Muslim perspective. We used to like um, give our young words some hadiths to take off hands and tell the society the effects. Up to today, some of the hadiths given to me, I can bring it down today. And also I believe, even from the Christians and angle, they are doing the same from the religious angle. I want to also bring the attention of the Naks. Um, the Naks used to see themselves as tertiary institutions, students, no, including primary schools and secondary schools. It behooves the nerves to like have a weekly or a monthly sensitization to all schools within the that cut across the Kuja local government, reach out to them, tell them the efficacy, the consequences of those phenomena, how bad it is in the society. I by privilege to be part of some civil society that are predominantly in Kuja. I want to mention on DTF, Donko Development Forum. They've been doing that in that regard, infrastructurally. For time being, or for almost 10 years or more, they have tried to like build schools, sorry, build science, uh, science laboratory to encourage our wards to go to school. From my left hand side, the science laboratory down here in this school is constructed by this same organization. Um, when you go to Sakin Numa, they have a modern lab. All this thing is to prepare our words towards having the kind of education we have. So I urge Nax to try to like look at how we are going to like push our words towards um, this angle and also gain the, the advantages. Within Lukoja Academy, we try to have an annual lectures that try to like sensitize people on the ills of the society. This is our third anniversary or four, and today, uh, this year, we are going to have the fourth one. So hopefully, the next, when we are going to organize us, we are going to bring you so that you have a first-hand information of what is happening within our society. I want to wrap it now, and the wrap has to do with uh, 
the, the religion aspect. My old guy tagged me too, even though I'm just a student. <laughs> I'm a student and I'm a teacher. Uh, sorry, let me let me even bring another, another issue again as to do with the traditional institution. To say that traditional institution doesn't have anything to say, I won't say it's a lie, but I think it's, um, it's a fallacy. I think traditional institutions have something to do. I understand that from 1976, when we used to have the local government reforms, there is this issue of native authority, the, um, local uh, the, the, the powers has been transformed to local government chairman to uh, kind of strengthen our democratic structures from the uh, state. But unfortunately, our democracy above, our government above, we tend to find ourselves in a situation whereby the local institutions are not that effective. Now, what will the traditional institution need to do is to bring or pursue a bylaw. It's a law in the local government, a bylaw that can coordinate or curtail the activities of each local government. Within our local government, we can call any of the head of the transition, can you do this for us? Can we push for this? Can we do that for us? Um, coordinators, directors, uh, I just want to bring the attention of the committee, uh, chairman on security, when he said that um, uh, there is no any law uh, penalty for courtism, I think you need to consult your legal advisors again for more information. I I was observing his uh, <laughs> countenance when you are saying this. I think the legal advisor need to guide us on this. I think there is something of this nature, and we need to work on that again. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. Kakanda TV.